Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It is episode 60 and today we are starting things off outside the Chorus plant farm that we built in the previous episode of Hermit Craft. Now, as you guys know, you know, this thing, it was, it was a fun project, it was a cool project to work on, it was something away from the base, and we used a fairly old school design. Now, it does kind of work. So for anyone who missed the episode, we've got a chorus flower farm over here. So this is generating chorus flowers. And then we use those chorus flowers to actually plant the chorus plants that then grow up like this. And then we harvest all of those using water and all of the items get picked up manually. So it's, it's, all, it's all a bit old school, I guess you could say. But, I mean, I, I think it goes without saying that it's not exactly groundbreaking in the world of chorus plant harvesting. I mean, we did manage to get around about 18 stacks within one hour, so it's not awful. I mean, it does the trick, but I received so many tweets, so many comments, and so many emails showing off all of the fancy different designs that you can use to create these things. I have to say, I'm a little bit envious. And I'm also a little bit curious. So this design is by Il Mango, and it looks absolutely ridiculous. And I just want to see if this still functions in the current version of Minecraft. Oh my word, it does! <laughs> oh my word! Look at that! So the way that it works, as you can see, <laughs> that is insane to watch. So, essentially, if you zero tick a piece of end block or end stone underneath a chorus plant, it will force it to grow instantly. And that mechanic is being used here to basically make the, make the flower go right the way up to the top. So I can hold down right click and this is just going to harvest forever. Oh, that is, that is totally ridiculous. <laughs> this is the coolest looking farm ever. Well, I'll put a link to this video down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Thank you ever so much to everyone that sent it to me. I had no clue this existed in Minecraft and it's blown me away. We're not going to build it today, but someday we will. Oh my word. Although I will just say we'll probably do it on a slightly smaller scale because I believe that one goes from bedrock all the way up to the sky limit, which is awesome, but I don't think I ever need that many chorus plants. Anyway, first things first, I'm going to take out our little mum box trademarked from this island right here. And actually, I've been reading through your comments, and it turns out that Iskal's been quite friendly by the sounds of things. Well, actually, I don't need the comments to tell me that. I mean, he did give me a diamond block, so that's that's extremely friendly. Even though it is kind of my diamond block, because I gave him seven diamond blocks, so he's kind of just given me one of my diamond blocks back. <laughs> it turns out he's actually been super friendly over by the Endrod store. So once this is removed, we'll go take a look. Just underneath my store... There was a chest, and inside that chest, there was all of the end rods. So it turns out that Iskal didn't actually take all of the end rods. And it's funny because I did the maths, because I was thinking to myself, oh, I can't believe Iskal stole all of the end rods. I can't believe he changed my sign. But then I realized that actually he gave me a diamond block, and that pays for all of the end rods in this shulker box perfectly. So if he wanted to, he actually overpaid. He's given me 10 diamonds for nine diamonds worth of end rods. So he could have kept them all, but because Iskal is a friend of mine and he's a very good hermit, he actually left all of the shulker boxes or all of the end rods underneath my store in this chest here. So thank you everyone down in the comment section for letting me know. The store is now restocked. Hermits, if you're watching and you need end rods, you know where to come and get them. Who filled the nether hub with TNT, by the way? <laughs> because that seems like a recipe for disaster. Ghasts are a thing. And there's a creeper over there that's just come through that nether portal, so we need to be extra worried. I mean, the, the nether's an explosive place. You don't need to add TNT into the mix. This is awful. My name's Iskel, and this is me doing a British accent. Arsenal, which is a football team, for anyone who doesn't know. Anyway, in today's Hermitcraft episode, we're going to be working in this area here, believe it or not. Now, this is something that we constructed months ago now, and it's been stressing me out because this is the one place in my base that we can't light up, and it fills up with mobs all the time. So I'm going to try and think of a workaround for that in today's video, and also build some cool structures. So the first thing that I've got to do is I've got to get rid of all the snow layers, and water buckets seem to be good for that but the only thing is <laughs> as i found out obviously they're also good at removing redstone something that surrounds this area i've just had to rebuild that area there of my sorting system oh yeah good 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 oh brilliant 
Oh, that breaks everything as well. I didn't even think about that. No! G go away. Why is that water not gonna... Oh, I haven't taken out the water bucket. Oh, it's all broken. I've decided that, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to use water to do this anymore. I thought that was such a smart idea as well. I thought I was onto a winner, but I have, I've rebuilt parts of my storage system about five times now. It's getting less enjoyable. Okay, I think that should be all of the snow layers fully removed and gone. Now, I hadn't really thought of what I'm going to do next, to be honest with you. I just knew that I had to remove them. I guess light it up, and then we can use snow blocks as opposed to snow layers. Where do I get snow blocks from? An iceberg next to a desert. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if... <laughs> that seems wrong to me, but there are snow blocks on it. I tell you what, I think snow blocks might be one of the most frustrating blocks to gather large quantities of in Minecraft. I mean, it seems like, to me, the only place I can get large quantities of them is icebergs, and they're not exactly the easiest terrain to traverse. So here's the situation. I've taken out all of the snow blocks in this area here, bar the ones that are just kind of floating and a few tiny little bits, and this is the number I've got. Hopefully that's going to be enough, but also I found a polar bear, and I thought it would be cool to have a polar bear actually in my base. So I'm going to try my best to get this guy in there. I mean, will he fit? Can I actually, can I put a polar bear in a boat? Or do they do they not fit in boats? Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. It works. <laughs> it actually works. <laughs> All right, well, this guy is going to be my cruising buddy. I am taking a screenshot right there, and I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. <laughs> That's the best thing ever. <laughs> right, uh, we have got thousands of blocks to travel. So uh, this is going to take a while, but it's going to be well worth it. Oh, seriously, we have got thousands and thousands of blocks to travel. I think my base is at positive 2,000, so we've got about 6,500 blocks to go by boat. Oh my word. Have a bit of a situation. I've hit land. I know you can't really see it because this polar bear is absolutely enormous. But I, I've crashed into an island. Right, where is this? I don't recognise any of this. Oh, this is the gravel. This is the gravel mountain type place. Okay, so we're about halfway home. We made it home. We managed to make it home. And as I got closer to this place, I slowly came to the realization that there are plenty of polar bears over by Iskal's base. That would have been significantly shorter on the boat. But this dude's here. I have no clue what to call him. Um, nothing for the time being, as I don't seem to have any name tags. I'm fairly certain that polar bears don't despawn, though, so... We shouldn't lose him. Anyway, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on replacing all of these grass blocks here with the snow blocks. And I'm going to hope that we can get at least a decent quantity of coverage. And then, I don't know, I guess we'll get ourselves a snow golem and then do it like that. I've just come up with a much better idea, and that is to add white concrete into the mix. They're fairly similar, but also the difference in block texture and the slight difference in color will add a little bit of depth and a little bit of variety, because otherwise this is going to look, well, very plain. Does that look okay? I actually think it does. In like a cartoony way, actually looks pretty cool. It doesn't look quite as good when you're up close. I'll, I'll, I'll give it that. But I think, I think from afar, when you're flying over, which is what this place is going to be like, that's actually pretty sweet. I'm enjoying this far more than I thought I would. I could do this for hours, I think. As you can probably tell from that clip, we did eventually run out of snow, but we got there in the end. So this has taken quite a long time, but I'd say it's worth it. I'm so glad that we've decided to do it because of course, this means that we can actually light up this place. <laughs> it's not going to be pitch black in the night, and it means that mobs aren't going to be spawning in here. But first, I think we need to do... I think we need to do the mumbo jumbo special. And that is, of course, to fly really far away and then turn around and fly towards the thing that you've built. And... That looks pretty cool to me. That looks pretty cool to me. Yeah. I'm a big fan. I think we've done a good job there. Okay, so that is stage one completed. We have got all of the blocks in place for the flooring area. 
Uh, now it is time to actually light up this place. Yeah, I guess we should probably crack on with that. And to do that, we are actually going to be using end rods because end rods kind of look like icicles. I would say they fit in quite nicely with the snowiness. I'd say they will look quite cool. I'm just hoping that I actually have some of them left. I feel like I probably don't. No. I'm fairly certain that's everything. So if I just get my F3 screen up, that's so embarrassing. Every single time I say that I've finished it, I've literally been walking around here for the past 10 minutes and I find the dark spot instantly. <laughs> okay, so after another bunch of walking around, now it is all fully bright and lit up and it's looking good. So now we have to work out how on earth we're going to get our polar bear up into this area. I think I have an idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm not sure. I mean, this is going to be challenging to say the least. I am happy to say though that he is still alive. So clearly these guys don't despawn. Now what I'm thinking is, is that we create a soul sand elevator that we shoot him up through in the boat. Or I could just use a lead. Can you get leads on these things? I know I said that I absolutely love Scar's terraforming, but it's not very conducive to transporting polar bears. That's the one thing I will say about it. <laughs> oh my word. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, okay, we have to be really careful here. He also doesn't seem to fit through my doors particularly very well. Is that, is that now gonna work? So I've made some pretty serious changes throughout my base and now we're go- mm. Oh! <laughs> That's like something out of a fairy tale. <laughs> I love this game. I I love this game. Oh my word. Right, okay, so where whereabouts is the snow the snow biome then? It's this way, I believe. So let's get this guy over there. Oh, this is gonna be tricky actually now that I think about it. And there we go. So we have got one polar bear in place, but I feel like we should get more than one. So I I'm going to quickly go and grab another one, and then we can have a couple of these guys roaming around. Before I do that, I mean, it doesn't seem to be particularly active. It's almost as if I've got a polar bear statue. I'm starting to doubt whether or not this thing is actually alive. This was much simpler. Uh, I've just grabbed it from next to Iskal's base. We're probably only about 300 blocks away. Forget anything else. This is my new favorite thing to do in Minecraft. I mean, to travel through... <laughs> travel through water, soul sand elevators with a polar bear is A, a sentence that I never thought I'd say in my life, but B, it's one of my favorite pastimes. You know what? I I'm gonna get another one. Is there any way these two can breed? I'm gonna do some research after I get another polar bear. Dude, <laughs> what are you doing out there? <laughs> Come on, let's get this next one in. He really is reluctant to, to go. I'm actually a little bit worried now that I think about it. I mean, these, these guys can do whatever they want. Obviously, they're completely free roaming. Hopefully, they don't roam off the edge because that would be bad news. <laughs> this is a bit of a hard transition, but you know, I thought I'd do something festive. Now, I thought it would be a good idea to pop over to the Christmas district because this is, of course, my last episode before Christmas and it's looking so beautiful. Now, there's a few things that I kind of don't want to show because I think they're being worked on right now. But obviously, the mini golf course is here. That's not... I mean, people are still going to be working on that after Christmas because that's something kind of separate, but that's looking awesome. But these houses as well are looking amazing. And then there's some houses just off in that direction that I don't want to show just yet, but they have the most beautiful roofs. They have the best looking roofs I've ever seen. It's actually had, it's given me like, ah, okay, this is gonna sound strange. So, <laughs> I'm gonna try my best to explain this. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that gets this, but I, I get like a, a feeling in my chest when I see something that I really like, so it gets me excited. I get it over camera equipment, get it over cars, and occasionally I get it over certain things in Minecraft, and those roofs have hit the spot for me. They are, they're perfect. They're absolutely amazing. So. Uh, whoever's working on those, they're just off in that direction there. Yeah, they're there behind that tree, actually. Uh, top stuff. <laughs> it's just seriously so good. Anyway, back to my slightly less pretty base now. I thought I would talk a little bit about this island right here because I've been doing some thinking about what I want to do with this place and I've come up with something. I've come up with something that I want to do here and I think it's going to work really nicely and that is to work with villagers. 
So this island right here is going to be my villager island. Now I know I'd always said that that would be going on in the city around my base, but this seems too perfect. I mean, imagine having our own little island of villagers. We can have like a little villager breeder in one corner and then maybe a cool villager trading system somewhere in here. But I've been thinking about it. I don't want the traditional one with them in lines. I'd quite like to try and do it vertically, but I have absolutely no idea how I'd do it. But that doesn't really matter right now because we don't have any villagers. So I've sent a message to Impulse and by the sounds of things, he's actually willing to help us out. Mumbo, how you doing my friend? Not too bad, not too bad. I'm, I'm happier now that I'm here because I can see <laughs> and hear a few yep. little chaps in inside this area here yeah yeah i heard you are in need of something that i have a ab ab abundance of <laughs> yeah like, i mean you, you 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 seem to be kind of overflowing with these guys which is yeah yeah i don't even know what to do with them anymore so the fact that you you know i can give them away to you yeah is good with me because yeah. i don't know what else i'll do with them anyway this is perfect. so yeah you you were looking for some villagers and yep. uh we can grab some out of this system. I set up a little rail. We need to get them to your base somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what okay. I thought we'd do, because I know that you've got, so you've got this powered rail going through into the nether, but mm -hmm. boats are much cooler than minecarts, you know? <laughs> That's true. That so, is true. So I thought what we'd do is we'd, we'd transport them via boat in through to my base because you're kind of on the edge of the island. So, That's true. Mm -hmm. So we can just throw them off the edge of the island into the water and then we can transport them over to my base via a nice long kind of cruise through the uh, through the waves. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. I, I don't boat enough on, on the server, so it'll be nice to catch some of that scenery as we go about. <laughs> yeah, we could do like a guided <laughs> tour. Well, don't, don't get a guided mm -hmm. tour from me because as we've found out in recent Hermitcraft episodes, I know very little. Uh, yeah, you know, I wanted to thank you for that because I got credited for pretty much every build in the industrial district from you. So, so, so thank you for believing that I could do that much work this season. <laughs> That's so it. funny. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I it kind of has become a kind of running joke in, in the comment <laughs> section that Mumbo thinks everything imagine. in the industrial district was built by impulse. Oh, oh that's great, man. I'll take the credit. I, I have no shame. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. Usually there's not a hole in the wall. This we just cut this open for the villagers to get out. Yep. This is how I actually get in. Check it out. Watch, I'm not gonna touch anything. Bam. That's very impressive. I heard a puffer fish. Uh-huh. Yep, I got a hidden puffer fish kind of yep. like un behind this wood log here. Yep. And he puffs up, gets a tripwire activated, and that's what opens the door. So it's like a completely undetectable player uh, sensor. You know what I mean? How have I never seen? I've never seen that before. And like, I'm always <laughs> looking up kind of hidden ways of doing things. And I don't know how I've never seen that before. But yeah, I've, it is I've, a cool mechanic. Yeah. No buttons needed. Just come close to this and bam. That's, that is seriously cool. And my mind is already kind of firing off in all directions as to different ways in which I can use that because that's super, super cool. Yeah, I wanted a, I wanted a, a way to hide, you know, an entrance basically yeah. where you couldn't see any buttons. And, and I, I was wondering when you walked through my base on your tour, if you were going to just like stumble upon it on accident. But <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. you, you pretty much have to stand in this corner to yeah. do that. You did. <laughs> yeah, that would be a tricky anyway. one. That would be that would be yeah, very lucky. All right, so we're gonna go up the bubble elevator. Yep. And put him in a boat, and then it actually goes like way above the bay. Yep. So so we have uh -oh. to kind of glide down. Kinda, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think he he's may okay. have bumped his head. <laughs> I can't actually see him anymore, which isn't the best. Oh yeah, no, no, he's still up there. Okay, that's okay? good. Okay. Where is he? Right. Okay, good. So he's right. popped out there. Yeah, now, once we get him out. Now we have we have experimented with one other villager who is down there, so we know that this works. But mm -hmm. one thing that we, we also know <laughs> we also know is that these villagers are very reluctant to stay where they are. So you got a boat? No, you're doing the boat because oh no. <laughs> <laughs> because what I feel like we should also mention is that there is also another villager somewhere down in that river, which is the one that I was responsible for. Yeah. <laughs> Who managed okay. to... Uh, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll try this. He's going to try to take off. Okay. It, uh, there he goes. Get in the... No, where'd the boat go? The boat just disappeared. <laughs> I'm not any better at this than you were. Oh, jeez. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. We, got, we, okay, got, there there we go. got there. We got there. We got there. 
I had like an invisible boat bug. I placed it and it just completely disappeared on me. That's oh, that's nice. hilarious. That's like the, the All right. it's the only time that you're relying on a boat to appear like when you need it to <laughs> and it's time sensitive. Right. Now, where where do you so, want to view this from because I imagine head, this is going to look pretty elegant. I would head to your right a bit and okay. then I'll see if you can make it off this ledge. Oh yeah, you're flying. <laughs> Did I get it? Did I go straight into the you water? Got it. You did... nailed it. You nice. You nailed it. Right, right into the water, man. Good jump. I give oh, it a that's ten. Amazing. A <laughs> ten. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, all right. So we got two more villagers for you. Yeah. And then you can speed these guys up and get it going. Excellent. All right. This so is perfect. Now, so I guess we've got a uh, yeah a long <laughs> boat ride round the kind of the south side of the island, then kind of wrapping back around, and then we'll gradually make my way or make our way over to my base. Oh man, it would be great if, have, have you ever seen uh, when Tango and ZF put the lead on a sheep and they would fly them around? Yes, yeah, no, I did see that, yeah. <laughs> could you imagine if we could do that with villagers? Oh my gosh, that, that would, would be, be so awesome. amazing. But then again, I will say that a polar bear, like now that I know that you can get a polar bear on a lead, I've experienced oh. putting a polar bear in a bubble elevator. That is that is something that is worth it. It looks like something out of a fairy tale. So there's something very <laughs> funny about doing that. And I imagine flying with a polar bear would also look really wait, hang on, can you when so if you have a lead, so the the, the thing says does it actually get suspended underneath you while you're flying? Or Yeah, it does. As long as you don't go too fast with the uh the rockets, it will stay on the lead. Like you have to be very careful about it, but it can it can work. Really? Yeah, I didn't realize. I, I, for some reason, I thought that was just to do with it being like a sheep. I thought that was like a sheep-only game mechanic, for some reason. <laughs> I don't no, know I why. You could do that I with the that polar bear. The <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I hear drown. Oh yeah, uh -oh. no, they've come for me. Okay. Okay. Well, that means that they're probably not going for the villagers then. Hmm. I think. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I've got some cobblestone, so we can we can block these guys up. Okay. And we'll, uh, I guess we'll Good push idea. them slightly closer together. Yep. So they can go in these little areas here. I got this one tucked in a little more too. I don't yep. know if he's gonna like take wall damage. I don't want to get him too close. Oh yeah, that's true. Especially with them being in boats. Can they control okay, the boats at all? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, here comes a drown. Let's see. Is he going after you or going after the villagers? I kind of want to see. Oh, he's going after you. All right, I'll save you. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So we've got the two in there, uh, and. Yeah, we've got the two in here. That's four. That means that we can, we can kind of. Well, I can do some villager breeding at some point. I've got more than enough to actually yeah. get myself sorted with these things. That's amazing. Excellent. Well, Looking forward to seeing what you do with them, man. Yeah, Matt. Well, hopefully I don't manage to kill them. That's you know, the, <laughs> <laughs> there's still a chance of that happening. Yeah. But yeah. no. Well, if you do, it's just gonna cost you a long boat ride. That's all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you ever so much for your help. So there we go. With a massive thank you to Impulse SV, we can actually start turning this island into the villager paradise, which it's going to be. And we're going to have to do some designs for our villager trading hall that's going to be vertical, villager breeders, all that sort of thing. Obviously, once we get a villager breeder, we can also start work on iron farms. It's all gonna start kicking off from here. But anyway, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. Have a very Merry Christmas to everyone who is watching. If you have enjoyed, please drop that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.